Hey guys, today we're going to continue with our calculus and we're going to determine if a function is continuous at a specific value. So the first thing we need to define is continuous. And looking at these three graphs, I'm sure you guys can probably figure out which one is continuous. Basically, if you can draw the graph without picking up your pen or pencil, that means that this graph is continuous. So this guy, he would be continuous. This one is not, because in order for me to draw it, I would have to pick up my pen or pencil and go ahead and draw the second branch. So this one is not continuous. Similarly, this guy is not continuous because if I tried to draw it, I would have to pick up my pen just to go over that hole. So if you can draw it without picking up your pencil, it is continuous, the graph would be continuous. Now, we also have some definitions for continuity. A function is continuous at some value if these three things are true. The first one says that f of c is defined. And I put a little picture over here to kind of show you some non-examples of why these things are not true. And so if I look at this graph, f of c is defined. If I want to know if this graph is continuous at x equals to 2, if you look right here, if I look at 2, there's a hole. There is no value there. So since it's undefined for that value, we would say that this graph f of x or whatever we had called it was discontinuous, and I'm going to misspell this word I'm sure, discontinuous at x equals to 2. Okay, so we have to have a function value for that point. Holes are no good. The second thing that we need to have is true is that the limit of going to that value of that function has to exist. So if I look at number 2 here, this one does have a function value at x equals, we're going to look at negative 1 now. If I look here, it is defined. There is a closed circle on f equals negative 1, so it would have fit my first thing. But if I look at the limit of this guy, I would see that from the left side, it's going to um, positive 3, and from the right side, it's going to negative 2. And so since there's a jump there, the limit does not exist. Therefore, this graph is, again, discontinuous at x equals to negative 1 can't read my graph, it's so small. Okay, so again, it can, it can actually equal a point there. There's a defi defined point, but the limit doesn't exist because there's a jump. The last thing is that that limit that you found has to equal to the function value at that point. There can't be that weird little point thing happening like we saw the other day. So if I look here at x equals negative 2, I can see that f of c is defined. f of negative 2 would equal to negative 1. I have a point there, I have a closed circle. And then if I wanted to find the limit as x goes to negative 2 of this function, I would see that from the left side it's going towards 4 and from the right side it's also going towards 4. So that would be, they would have a limit defined there. However, because they don't equal each other, this is still discontinuous at that hole, at that jump. And that makes sense because I would have had to pick up my pencil in order to draw that little point down there. So when you're looking if something is continuous, you have to have all three of these pieces in order for it to be true. So let's get an example problem. It asks you is f of x equals x cubed plus 1 continuous at, f, or at x equals 2. So your first step um, is to go ahead and plug it in. So if I had f of um, 2, that would get me 2 cubed plus 1, or 9. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to find the limit as x goes to the value they gave me of f of x. And in this case, again, if you can plug it in, plug it in. So I have 2 cubed plus 1, that doesn't give me an indeterminate form, that's 9. And since I know that 9 equals 9, shockingly enough, I'm good, and therefore, yes, it is continuous. And you would know that if you drew your picture, you know that this is the cubic parent function moved up one, so it looks like this. And I just drew that without picking up my pen except for to put the arrows on. And spoilers, all polynomial functions, so cubes, squares, to the fourth, any sine or cosine functions, and radical functions are continuous in their domain. So why it says in their domain is because if you think about the square root function, it is continuous, but only in that part. If they ask you about negative 2, it doesn't even exist there. So that means that it, wouldn't be it would be discontinuous. But if it's in their domain, if you're starting at 0 for your radical function, you'd be good. 
Let's look at another example. Nope, nope, not examples. This is the types of discontinuity. So um, we've already seen most of these. You're going to have, if you have a removable discontinuity, which is a whole, that means that you're going to have a discontinuity, just like we saw in those first examples. And the way we figure out if there's a whole is a factor cancels out. So if you're looking at a rational function and a, a factor cancels, that means that you are discontinuous at that point. If you have a vertical asymptote where you have that thing that's approaching and it's never hitting it, that means that you are also going to be discontinuous. So that's when we set our bottom equal to zero. And finally, if you see a break or a jump, that's going to be in a piecewise function most of the time, it's also discontinuous there. So let's look at some examples of each of those three. The first one is some rational function. So if I look at this, I go ahead and I try to find all those values. And so if I plug in f of three, I would get nine minus three minus six over nine minus six minus three, which is sad. It's zero over zero. And so since it doesn't um, exist for that first one, I can already say that it's a no because I know that their value doesn't exist. And you would see that there was a hole if you had factored the top and the bottom, it would have been x minus three, x plus two, all over x minus three, x plus one. And so that would have canceled out and I got a removable discontinuity for this one. And we can't spell removable. And so it didn't fit that first requirement that there was a function value there, therefore it wasn't continuous. So I know that there's a hole at x equals three. The other thing I know about this graph is if I set the denominator equal to zero, I actually have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative one. So it's also discontinuous at negative one if they asked you that question. Okay, let's look at piecewise defined function. So I'm looking at is f of x equal this stuff continuous at x equals three, and they're usually gonna ask you about one of those endpoints. Again, you can graph the picture if you need to, but you can also just plug in and see if it works. So if I'm looking for f of three, if I have an equal to sign, that means that value does exist. So I'm just gonna plug in into the one that it fits, two times three plus two. So negative six plus two is negative four. So my first um, stipulation is good. Now I'm gonna go find the limit as x approaches that value, um, three, I totally lost it, of f of x. And remember, we're gonna be looking from the left side and the right side. So from the right side, this graph is gonna be going from, to three minus two, or one. And then my left side, it's gonna be using my other function, and we already plugged that in and found out that was negative four. So this right here does not exist. It doesn't equal from the left side and the right side, which means it doesn't fit all three of my stipulations. And so no, this graph is not continuous at x equals to three, because there's probably a break or a jump at that point. And then when I look at this guy, hopefully this one works. So we have is f of x continuous at x equals five. Again, your first step is to plug in and make sure that that value exists, because if it doesn't exist, you can be done. So since it equals to five, I'm using my second equation. So five squared minus 16 is equal to nine. 25 minus 16 is nine. Then I'm gonna go ahead and find the limit as x goes to five of f of x. And again, since this is a piecewise, I'm gonna have to do my left side, right side business. And so from the left side, again, that is your less than. I know that that, I already plugged that in, I got that that was nine. My right side is gonna be my greater than, and if I plug in two times five minus one, that also got me nine. So that means that the limit does exist. Whoa, what's going on? The limit does exist and it equals to nine. So now, the last thing I gotta look at is my computer freaking out. Well, you know. So the last thing I get to look at is the fact, does your limit equal your value and nine does equal nine? We're happy, that means that this graph is actually continuous at that spot. And that's all I've got for you today.